Hi everybody, my name is Jaden. I'm yeah. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. And we thank you very much for hanging out with us. We thank you for spending your very precious time with us. And we appreciate you all. And we hope that you guys would all consider us your family. Because we consider all of you guys our family. And we love you all and really, really love Yah's people. And we are the people that what, Jade? We believe the laws, statutes, and commandments, the first five books of the Bible, the Torah, is what we should follow. We should, it is not hung on the cross. It was not done away with by Peter, Paul, Yehoshua. It was not done with that. And we also believe that Yehoshua, the son of Yahuwah, Yahuwah, people know him as God, and Yehoshua is Jesus. And uh, we believe that he died so that we have forgiveness of sins, that he gave us a chance to have eternal life. Yes, and so Messiah, our Messiah, died a perfect sacrifice so that we are able to have the curse of the Torah fall from us. And the curse of the Torah is spiritual death. We will all die a physical death, but we uh, there's a spiritual death that we don't have to die. And this is why we are here, because we are begging, pleading, asking anybody who is willing to even consider a different route or a different road or a different way through life to please consider some of the greatest things that most of us have never ever seen, which is the Torah. And it's found in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And those five books have been thrown away by 40,000 different religions. Those five books don't matter to anybody. They will take, um, they'll take eight books out of the back end of a book uh, which are Paul's writings, and they will make a doctrine on Paul's writings. And at some level, Paul becomes their God because they choose his ways or what his writings are. And it's not necessarily Paul's uh, ways because uh, most of Paul's writings, most people don't believe are even written by the same people. So there's a lot of differences in all the writings from one book. It comes up and he goes, ah, you don't need to keep the law. The law is dead. It's this. And you have to read real deep to try to figure out what in the world he's saying. And then other books, he's like, oh, you, 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 should, you, should you live in sin? No, absolutely not. The Torah is here. So it's obviously books that are written by people that have signed them by Paul. And back in the days, um, I think it's called Pygmy. What is it? Pygmy. What is it where they steal? It's Pygmy is something. Uh, it's, it starts with it's, it, it's not actually a, the word pig, but it's like where they steal person's name and write their letters underneath of it. And I can't remember the name for it, but I believe it starts with pig. Um, I'll have to come up with it, something like that. But that's essentially what people did: is they wrote letters and they signed their name Paul, and nobody would read their stuff if it was Brian, right? Brian signs all this stuff, but Paul was a legend back in the days, and so people wrote and read things that were. Uh, from Paul. And so this is where we have to decide right here is, is your God going to be Paul or is your God going to be Elohim Most High, Yahuwah? And so um, this is where we are at. Now, um, before we begin, I want to shout out the, um, the the scriptures, Josh scriptures, guys. There's a shout out and a plea to, if you guys are wanting to help donate to Boss Clan, Boss Clan does not take any money from any of this stuff. It will never, ever go into our bank account that we use for personal uses. This is for the prisoners of the United States of America. And so I am begging on behalf of the prisoners of the United States of America that you guys help us build this, this printing press. What we are attempting to do with this $64 book is we are trying to get a printing press that we are able to send free scriptures into prisoners. And the $64 is an absolute steal. All these other books, it, um, the Sefer sells the same thing for hundreds of hundreds of dollars, like three or $400. Um, the RSTNE guy, he grips everybody for $400. The How You Scriptures grips everybody for $400. And this is a bigger print than you will get anywhere else. It has 103 books, and you will not find a bigger print version. It has 3,153 pages is what went to print. They will be here, Yah willing, at the end of February, early March. And we have our dear family in the States who will be shipping these all out to everybody who is in line. We thank everybody who has purchased a copy of these. We have our first thousand. We don't know if they'll ever have more than a thousand come in. So if you want one of these books, which could very well be limited edition, this is the time to do it. 
If you do not want to purchase a book, if you cannot, that is not a problem whatsoever because we provide this absolutely free of charge without any charge whatsoever. The exact same scriptures that you get in Yah's scriptures, the book version, you can grab in this PDF. Download this and you are absolutely good to rock and roll. Okay, now, um, anybody want to explain a little bit um, what happened yesterday? And before that, we need to do our, our um, owl sound. Anyone want to do an owl? Because we have we have our uh, brother brother Glenn, who's our wise old owl. So we need like some uh, some sound effects. Ooh, 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 ooh. It's the brother Glenn owl hour right here. And so brother Glenn sent me some stuff right here. Um, Jane, what's what, the word you looking for? Pseudopigrapha. Pseudopigrapha. That's it. You got it. Pseudopigrapha. Thank you very very much. How, what'd you look up to find that? Uh, what is it when you write in someone else's name? That's it. it pseudopigrapha. Yeah, pseudo means fake, so it's pseudopigrapha, and and that's what we believe a m lot of Shaul's Paul's writings um, were. Now this is for uh, Brother Glenn, uh, Wise Owl Hour, and Brother Glenn always helps us out, and we really really appreciate it. This is what he says, Jason. <clears throat> It takes some research to find all those ancient places because either they don't exist any longer or have been renamed. Like Luz, Luz, for example. Bethel, ancient city of Palestine, located just north of Jerusalem, originally called Luz in modern times, uh, Baton. I don't know what modern times Baton is. Uh, so I'm going to look at this map so we can get this up on this. And um, let's take a quick look here. Because we've been talking a lot about these different things. And um, so this is yet another map. And so this is showing the map on this side. So like over here for everybody that is watching this on the screen. That is this little area that we are talking about. And if you see, and what really, really, um, when we started reading Joshua, I, I, I didn't realize how many towns and people that they had annihilated. How many places. I mean, this is like going into any place in, in, in North America in, in some state and just starting to run across it. You'd get all these little towns, all these little things. Now, the next thing he says is um, Ataroth is a place on a boundary between Ephraim and Benjamin toward the west. It seems to be the same Ataroth Adar. It is named along with Dibon, which is identified D Dibon, eight miles northeast of North Dibon of the South Wadi Zerka Ma'in stands Jabal Atras. And if it sounds like I just spoke another language, it sounds like I did. In which the ancient name is preserved. Okay, so this part right here is looking right here. Um, it kind of looked like the same spot, but um, I don't know what we're... Okay, and so over here as well. Are we looking at the same map or are we no, not? So okay, we are, moved over just a little bit. I think we're like, see down here like little blocks? Box yeah, I see the block. I think it's like it was zoomed But then the, the blocks, this is the first map, right? Okay, so the first block is over by that little water thing right there. Second block is right there where the same water thing is, right? Third block is up a little bit. All right, so this, this one actually is up a bit. So let's take a quick look at what he's talking about. He says the ancient towns of Upper Bethron and Lower Bethron are identified respectively with the present-day Palestine air villages of Bet Ur Al Al Fuka and Bet Ur Al Taha, which are believed to be to be to preserve the ancient names. All right, I wasn't going to sound that one out. That one doesn't sound right. And I sat there and looked at that word for a second, and I'm not going to I'm not going to try to put that one down. Okay. Um, this map is up a little bit more, and uh, he says, uh, I think it's uh, Mikmetha, Jos, 1717. The position of the place must be somewhere, uh, Joshua, on the east and of not distant from Shechem. So again, he's showing us this block has moved up a little bit. So I don't know where Brother Glenn gets these maps, but this one's kind of handy. Um, so again, this is what we're looking at here. Um, and he also says, here's... here's Tap, Tapua um, is a town in the West Bank, four miles uh, west of Kebron. And so there is what we were reading there as well. Okay, so I think that is it. And I want to, again, give a big shout out to our uh, wise owl, our um, brother Glenn, because we really, really appreciate um, the wisdom that the uh, groups of all of you guys come forth and, and deliver to us because we are not... Um, 
I don't think we're teachers. I think we just read with you guys and we learn with you guys as well. So perhaps we're all students together and we are learning um, as, a, as a quorum or as a tribe. So here we are. Okay, 17. Anyone have anything based upon maps? We got some basic maps out of there. Um, anyone? Okay, 17. And the lot. Okay, before that, prior to this, let me go back. What happened yesterday exactly? Um, so they were dividing lands. It was talking about where we were at and what, who got what. It was basically um, giving stuff to uh, Ephraim, and the day before that, we were giving stuff to Judah. Right, and so we were looking at roughly yesterday's. Was yesterday's the Yahudas group, or was it Manasseh? Yesterday's Manasha? was Ephraim and Manasseh. Ephraim and Manasseh. And so this is, again, this isn't a great map, but... It, Things have probably changed, but these are the areas that we were kind of looking at yesterday. And the day before, I think we looked at Judah's areas. Okay, now, here we go. And the lot for the tribe of Manasseh, for he was the firstborn of Yosef, was for Machir, the firstborn of Manasseh, father of Gilad, because he was a man of battle. Therefore, he had Gilad and Bashan. And for the rest of the children of Manasseh, for their clans there was, for the children of Abiezer, for the children, and for the children of Kalek, and for the children of As Asriel, and for the children of Shechem, and for the children of Kephir, and the children of Shemitah. These were the male children of Manasseh, son of Yosef, according to their clans. Okay, now, um, this is simply giving us a little bit of genealogy, but we, we hear um, father of Gilad, who was maker, the firstborn of Yosef, was maker, right? M-A-K-I-R. That, that's not right, though. That's the firstborn of Manasseh, right? Mm -hmm. So the firstborn of Yosef was Manasseh and Ephraim. And, um, well, Ephraim was the older. Ephraim was the firstborn. Manasseh was the younger. Right. right. Yeah. Was it? Was Ephraim? Yeah, because he swapped yeah. the blessings over. So yeah, Manasseh, Manasseh got the yeah. blessings uh, of the firstborn. Okay. So this is interesting, though, because he's talking about the kid. His kid was because he was a man of battle. Um, I, I don't know why I find that fascinating, but I do. Okay, three. But Zelophad, son of Kephir, son of Gilad, son of Mechir, son of Manasseh, had no sons, but only daughters. And these, these were the names of his daughters, Makla and Noah, uh, Kagla and Milka and Tertza. So it sounds like, uh, what, five girls mm -hmm. that he had? Okay. And they came near before Eliezer the Kohenan, before Yahushua, son of Nun, and before the rulers, saying, Yahuwah commanded Moshe to give us an inheritance among our brothers. So he gave them an inheritance among their father's brothers, according to the command of Yahuwah. Now, for anybody that doesn't know this story, tell us what this story is right here. So back in the days of Moses, that they're most like trying to clean, like, how the land's going to go, how you're going to do this stuff. And they came to him, and they're like, it's after, it's after Aaron died, so it's um, finished in charge now. And he's like, doing all these things, and these five women come to him, and they're like, hey. Was it five women, or was it two? I thought it was two women. Was, was it all five? Was, five, yeah, was yeah. it these women right here? Yeah. yeah. These ones? Yes. It's yeah. like oh, okay. The ones that were named. I'm, I don't know if they're still around because I mean, it's been 40 years, but um, they're like, are, we have no we have no father. We have no way to inherit our land. We are just five women. Because back in the day, it was like, you go to the nearest like, male, right? You go to the male, you go to yep. the son. And they're like, our father died in his own sin. He wasn't part of Korah. He wasn't part of like anyone from Egypt. He just died in his own sin in the wilderness. We would like inheritance as well, and so Yah made a new rule that the daughters could have the inheritance. To the yeah, person. They're basically the closest relative to the person that was in the land. Right, and prior to this, it all inheritance fell upon the men, it fell upon on the boys coming out of that. The firstborn um, gets double portions of stuff. Um, Jade's over there uh, shaking his head. Jade, why? Why is that? Why are you? Uh, why are you happy about that? I'm the firstborn. So well, you're the firstborn. What does that mean, though? What is? Why would the firstborn get double inheritance? More responsibility. More responsibility. He's supposed to take care of his brothers, huh? Like, in, like in a responsible way, right? You see where we're going with this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hear a bus. Ah, bus. Choo choo. No, it ain't a bus. It's a train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. There's a single light on the track, and is we don't know what's coming, but it sounds like choo choo. Okay. So double portions means that you have double responsibility. You're supposed to take care of all your brothers. And, and sisters and all that kind of stuff. You're supposed to be like the head of the household when your pops dies, essentially, is why somebody would end up with that. Okay, so we have the five girls, and the five girls went and they, they did something that nobody had ever done. And it was courageous, right? Because the females don't have a tremendous amount of say in a lot of these things that the guys were out there doing. They can show that you can ask things of most Exactly. And it's not like 
every not everything it, was set in stone. Right? Not everything was like there. There were like things you could ask for and things that could change. Like specifically, what land they inherited the land? Can women have inherited the land now too? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, and so that you know that goes to the is what our creator says negotiable. Well, in this case, it absolutely was. And so um, most things, I don't know if so much you can negotiate, but we do know that when it comes down to certain things like this, that our creator is very fair, right? It would be unfair that the women that were in this group, that they didn't have any kind of um, inheritance. And so our creator is very, very, very fair. Okay, five. And 10 portions fell to Manasseh, besides the land of Gilead and Bashan, which were beyond the Yardim. Does that mean ten portions? Like is that just like, uh, like yeah, like a certain like amount of land. Yeah, ten portions fell to Manasseh. Um, I don't know exactly what ten portions were, but he definitely had one of the bigger of the lands. Yeah, the he had here. Looking at this map right here, this he had, and this is the map that I, we think is kind of not so good, kind of get toe. But anyway, if you look at this right here, Manasseh has a huge chunk of land right there, and he also has a huge chunk of land right there. And Ephraim, where's Ephraim's right here? It should be like right here. Like, uh, do I just not see it in this? Ephraim was right under him. Was it under him? Oh, there he is. Oh, there he's right there. Ephraim's right here. So Ephraim's right there. Ephraim has a, between Ephraim and uh, Manasseh, I think they got the biggest portions of all of this. Maybe Judah may have gotten like something close to comparable, but as far as what we see right there, um, they got it. So whatever the 10 parts were, that fell to them. Okay. Um, and the 10 portions fell to Manasseh besides the land of Gilad and Bashan, which were beyond the Ardeen, because the daughters of Manasseh received an inheritance among his sons, and the rest of Manasseh's sons had the land of Gilad. And the border of Manasseh was from Asher to Mikametha, which faces she Shechem. And the border went up to the right to the inhabitants of Ain Tapaka, the land of Tapak, belonged to Manasseh, but Tapak on the border of Manasseh belonged to the children of Ephraim. And the border went down to the Wadi Kana, southward to the Wadi. These cities of Ephraim were in the midst of the cities of Manasseh, but the borders of Manasseh was north of the Wadi and it ended at the sea. Okay, so it says it ended at the sea. And I don't know why I don't like these maps, this map. Manasseh, so it ends at the sea. So, I mean, according to this map, this this the, at least the border is is right it ends at the sea and so it's just essentially just talking where they're at identifying exactly what they what they have i feel like nobody really drew this out like nobody really has a, like a solid idea on oh, what's exactly shaped how it was yeah it'd be designed. interesting it'd be because i mean how are you supposed to know if nobody like drew it out and like put it out, out and it wasn't travel through time you're just gonna kind of guess how it kind of went yeah it, it that would be just a very interesting question to ask moshe did they who mapped them i mean if they're writing stuff you'd think they could they could come up with an idea of a map it may not be exact but um i don't know so here we are 11 and in yisachar and in asher Manasseh had beth shean and his towns and yiblim and its towns and the inhabitants of dor and his towns and the inhabitants of ein dor and his towns and the inhabitants of ta'anak and its towns and the inhabitants of megiddo and its towns, three of the heights. But the children of Manasseh weren't able to drive out the inhabitants of those cities, for the Canaanites desired to dwell in that land. And it came to be when the children of Yisrael were strong that they put the Canaanites to compulsory labor, but did not utterly drive them out. So here we go again. We have these, I don't, were they, who, were the, the, who were the very first people they made the uh, deal with? It wasn't oh, the Canaanites. Oh, was there people from Gibbon. Gibbonites, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so we have, now we have, um, Canaanites, right? So we have people from Canaan, and the Canaanites are definitely the giant um, DNA, right? These are the giants, um, and they, they were unable to do it. Um, 14, and the children of, of Yosef spoke to Yahushua, saying, Why have you given us but one lot and one portion to inherit, seeing we are a great people whom Yahuwah has brought until now? And Yahushua said to them, If you are a great people, go up to the forest to clear a place for yourself there in the land of the Perizzites. And the Rephites, since the hill country of Ephraim is too narrow for you. Then the children of Yosef said, The hill country is not enough for us, and all the Canaanites who dwell in the land of the valley have chariots of iron, both those who are in Bet Shean and its towns, and those who are of the valley of Israel. It's very interesting, right? Um, we live in a modern society now that is everyone's scared of guns, right? But back in the day, 
it sounds like the chariots were the were where everybody was scared at, right? Chariots of iron. Yeah, I mean that's like like high power vehicle, right? That's like like a yeah. car almost. That'd be like an SUV in our time, you know, like some big powerful thing. Um, you have horses. You're gonna be running over these people. I mean, you probably I I don't know exactly what a chariot was. I remember from the movie Gladiator that we saw way back in the day. There was a couple people that could sit in these chariots. And so you could have like a spearman, you have the dude driving the chariot, you know, maybe a spear guy or something, just, just zipping them down as you're riding by. Um, you know, the only thing you could stop these things with, you'd, you'd have to shoot the, uh, the people, uh, you'd have to shoot the horses or the people to stop the chariots. Um, and, and so that's where you're up against is, is something like that. But um, they're scared of uh, chariots of iron. And I, I imagine that would be um, quite intimidating, uh, especially if you're on foot. 17. And Yahushua spoke to the house of Yosef, to Ephraim, and to Manasseh, saying, You are a great people and have great power. You are not to have one lot, for the hill country shall be yours. For though it is the forest, you shall cut it down, and its farthest limits shall be yours. For you are to drive out the Canaanites, though they have iron chariots and are strong. So they're basically giving them a pep talk, telling them they, 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 they're they going to have more than this, and they need to go fight for it. Yeah, and right now you have great, 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 great grandma Greta Thunberg that's sitting there. Oh, you're going to chop the forest down, right? This is this is where the spotted owls all started disappearing, right here, folks. The, the forests are gone. I'm just kidding. They, got, they, but, got, they have a built house in the mouth. Yeah, <laughs> that, well, that's the thing is, is, you know, people say that you're running out of toilet pa paper because you... Uh, you're killing the spotted owls. And, you know, like 25, 30 years later, we still have toilet paper, which is very interesting. I don't know exactly where it and comes they're from. they're making, like, lab-grown, like, bug meat. And they can make some toilet paper. Oh, figure, yeah. They can figure some toilet paper out and of they, the way. It ain't just lab-grown bug meat. They, they make lab-grown steak, beef steak. It's from a 3D printer I've that's... And it's sitting there, and it kind of looks like a steak. So I guess if they have a problem with this, they why don't they just start making their own toilet paper, right? I like a Lab helpful note, just get a boudet. Yeah, get a boudet. And if, you, if that's the wrong way to say it, you should be, I think it's bidet. I think it's the, that's oh, the world. It's B-I-D-E-T. It's, it's bidet. Yeah, no, that's absolutely something. Um, if it, Yeah, here here is a life lesson for anybody in the United States. If you have any plumbing at all in your house, the time is now to get a bidet. It's time to stop diving into the darkness. It is time to start using the sprayer on the side of it. And we didn't know anything about it. We come from North America, and for some reason we have set ourselves on toilet paper instead well, of like this. The rest of the Europeans have this. They, they're Asian. Asians have, do they have this? Yeah, it's, in Japan they have it. Do they? Yeah, and so I don't know why we still use toilet paper. It's really, really old fashioned, but um, it's 30 bucks or less on Amazon, and you never ever have to buy toilet paper again. We got way off track on that. But anyway. Okay. Anyways, uh, any anyways. One of those and we're back. Yeah, any one of those. It's coming from the chariots of the toilet paper. Here we go. All right, everybody. Well, that's it. Thank you guys very, very much. We hope you guys have a wonderful day. We thank you guys for hanging out with us, holding on, and we are out. All right. All right. Shalom. Shalom.